<gasps> Fake ass bitches. Repressed memories from the psych ward. Part 2. New night nurse, it's meds time. B is too anxious to swallow pills so has to get liquid. Here are your meds, hands me pill. I can't take these. Oh my bad, here you go. Hands me to full cups of medication. No, this is not right. I only take up to the 10. You have to take them or you will get in trouble. Continues to argue. Ends up taking meds BC to tired. Passing out. Unable to form sentences. Walking around in confused state. Um, we need to call her parents. <gasps> uh, what the fuck, dude? Brooke, you are diabetic. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. It says right here. Oh, that's Sally's records. Okay, well, you still shouldn't be eating cheesecake in a mental hospital. And why not? You aren't here for fun. The nurse gave it to me, though. <sighs> well, she's going to be fired. He isn't going to be very happy about that. Give me his name. No, I'm, I'm not a snitch. You're in here for bipolar disorder and you're not a snitch. I have bipolar disorder. I don't have little bitch syndrome. Uh, and the fact that you would even ask me to snitch on a nurse is fucked up. Go home to your husband and tell him that you're having an affair with one of the nurses in here and that you're lesbian. How did you know that? I do my research. Is this your first time here? Yeah. What do you even do? Basically, you gotta go to group therapy or else you get punished. Uh, try not to talk back or else you might get booty juiced. Oh, if you want to write down any social media, just, just head in your bra. And try not to shit on the wall. Part two of things I've experienced in a mental hospital. So your girl was too bad for four wins. Not necessarily something to brag about. But I wasn't allowed there anymore. So they had to send me to this place in Vermont which is called Brattleboro Mental Hospital. This shit was jail. I got in there and the bed was on the fucking floor. You don't get a roommate. You gotta sleep with your door open. You don't get a blanket besides this like weighted one so you can't kill yourself with it. There wasn't bathrooms for like boys and girls so people had to share bathrooms. And I was in with this crazy ass motherfucking group of kids that I was like, oh my God. So one night this boy got let into the bathroom by one staff. And and then this girl also got let into the same bathroom by a different staff. They ended up doing the dirty in the bathroom, which was fucking disgusting. I wore my shoes in the shower. Then they got snitched on and could not be near each other for the rest of the time of me being there. Let's try and make this a bit more fun. He wants to pack with me. Oh my god. These are my games and shit from last time. <laughs> Roll on no spray. Ladies be stocked up. Kmart gel pens. This is my coloring book that I bring to all my admissions. One day I will finish it. I mean, hopefully not. Word search. <sighs> Ugly ass shoes with no laces. My court folder. <laughs> Undies and bras. <laughs> Pants. Shirts. Absolute most important thing. Soft clean socks. This is my specific charging cord I bring to all my hospital admissions because it's very short. Toiletries, you literally don't need anything. I'll add my toothbrush and toothpaste later. No glass allowed. All I have is scrunchies, lip balm, moisturizer, a bit of blush, a bit of concealer, and a beauty blender, and a brush, and mascara. <laughs> don't forget your medications. And that's everything. Hope you enjoyed. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, tell me why every single time that I'm talking to somebody, the doctor wants me. Brooke, the doctor would like to see you. I fucking knew it. Yep, give me a fucking minute. Jesus. Hi, Brooke. Hi, Brooke. Yeah, come on, let's go. So, I have a deal for you. Wait, what? I have a deal for you. So we're gonna kill some people? What? No. Sometimes I can see why your parents brought you in here. Don't be catching an attitude with me, dude. All right, all right, listen. Mm-hmm. 
if you tell me which of the patients are selling puff bars or blades or anything like that, I will up your dosage of Xanax and I'll give you two extra pills a day. No. Really? Not even for drugs? I ain't no snitch. Come on, I know damn well you're one of those kids who did drugs in the back of the school. Let's go. No. I'm cutting off your Xanax. So, what are you in here for? I tried off myself. <laughs> no way, me too. We can't play hangman, so we do this stupid build a flower instead. What do you mean no blank is in the group room? It's cold as heck in there. I'm supposed to freeze. Here, quick, for dinner Snapchat. They're not looking. Yeah, I know. The shower's so weird. Yeah, we used to have fidget spinners, but they banned them because someone threw one and got stuck in a girl's hair. You've only been here three times? <laughs> I've been here seven. Part four of going to a mental hospital that is now getting shut down by the government. Now this one's the one that gives me panic attacks. So please bear with me. Now it's just a normal day, right? And all of a sudden the fire alarms go off. And this was not just a drill. You look to the right of you and you look through the plexiglass into the staff room and there's a fire, okay? Now my thought is we're gonna leave. Wrong, if you're a patient, you're not allowed to leave the building. Even though there's a fire right next to us. So obviously patients start screaming and crying and they start getting dragged into rooms by staff members. And staff members are also screaming. Now me and my friend were told to go into a different room. It wasn't safe there anymore. So I told my friend, I said, let's go. And his face got beat red and he screamed, just leave Lily, please. Yeah, well he blacked out. He ran by and grabbed an axe off of the firefighter's back and proceeds to swing at people and the alarm. Part five of going to a mental hospital that got shut down by the government. So basically they got the axe away from him, the firefighters and the staff members, and he just basically collapsed to the ground into like a fetal position. He wasn't responsive or anything like that. And at that point I ran into this room Everybody's just like scratching at themselves, like pulling their hair out, crying, screaming to like shut the alarm off. Basically just like begging to leave. About 10 minutes go by of that and then they get the alarms off and the fire handled. When I walked out of the room, he was still on the floor. So I helped him and like told him it was going to be okay and everything. Um, and he like slowly came back basically. After that, they gave us all, like, little cups of pills, basically, and they turned on a movie, so we would just be, like, zoned out. And the people that got dragged away into the ALSA remained there. We didn't see them. Part six? Okay, I see everybody talking about their psych ward stories, so here's one of my many. Um, the first time I was in there, I was in there for a couple months, um... There was an old lady in there. She was really weird and quiet, but she would, like, just sit and glare at everybody. And we were like, okay, that's weird. So after I got out, we were, like, a day or two after I got out, we hear on the news that this lady murdered someone out in the courtyard at the hospital. And that she had a list of all the patients that were in there and that she wanted to kill she had a list um I don't know who was on it I don't know if I was on it probably because I was in there with her but uh yeah I'm glad I left when I uh so you just got here yeah bro well don't fuck with Julie she'll eat your hair eat my hair bitch what also don't bother asking for a journal or pencil we lost our pencil privileges Julie tried to stab me whoa where is Julie I'm Julie. Excuse me, nurse? Yes, what do you need? Where are the crayons? And the paper, and the drawings, and the notebooks? That's a great question. Um, you are on 48 hour suicide watch, so there are no crayons or coloring books. <sighs> How the fuck can I hurt myself with a stick of colored wax? People have tried. I know you're fucking lying. Okay, well, here, I'm gonna need you to watch your language. Okay. Fuck. No. No. I just want some crayons, bro. You can't get any fucking crayons, bro. Yeah, exactly. So don't tell me to watch my language. The fuck. You know what? Go in the padded room. Make me, bitch. 
I'm trying really hard just not to throat punch you. So if you would get your fat ass the fuck up and go in the padded room and make my life just a little bit- This is abuse! ABUSE! Okay, now do you smoke? Yeah, actually I do. Um, can I get like a nicotine gum or a patch or something? We don't administer them to minors. But I need one. Honey, smoking will kill you. Okay, well, if I don't smoke, I will fucking kill. All right. Can we call the doctor in, please? The therapist? Someone? She's getting a little hostile. Of course I'm gonna get fucking hostile if I don't have fucking nicotine. Susan! Yeah. So, you, so you, you're really gonna ignore me. You're, you're really gonna- Guys, look. The staff members have the bags. I wonder who's getting discharged. Hmm. I don't know. Hey, bitches, guess who's getting discharged today? Oh my god, you're leaving? Yes, sir. So I'm leaving at 4.21 p.m. and I'm never coming back. Yes, I swear you better not come back. But like... Don't leave me. Mr. Max, I don't have to do this. You know why? Why? Because I'm getting discharged. So rate your feelings on a scale of 1 to 10? Um, I would say usually I'm at like a 1. But since I'm getting discharged, eh, I would say like two, two and a half. So spill, you know, what are you going to eat when you go home? Well, girl, that Popeye's be hitting. Yes, sis, but like, write down your social media. Things in the cycle that just don't make sense, part three. We're not allowed lighters. However, we can have a lighting machine in the garden that the hole is big enough to, uh, yeah. We're not allowed pets. However, we have cats that basically live at the hospital. Drinking chemicals is frowned upon. However, they let us keep all of our toiletries in our room. We are not allowed foil as it's contraband. However, we can have it in our advent calendars. And finally, we're not allowed to add staff on Facebook. However, some staff, when they leave, add us on Facebook. Phrases you will hear in a mental hospital. Did you hear there's jello for dessert? Yeah, I just got my shoelace privileges back. So why are you here? Uh, I remember trying that one. Oh boy, another ginger ale. Did you hear what happened last night? I'm going home today. Bring, bring. Hello? Sarah, the phone's for you. So apparently I'm bipolar. <laughs> Do you guys have something other than ginger ale? One of the nurses told me that if we walk five laps around the floor, it's a mile. Knock, knock. <laughs> Just came to check your vitals. Do the eggs always taste like plastic or... That is awesome. Do you do you want to see what I'm coloring? Yeah, a flower. <laughs> Here are some things I wish I would have known before I got thrown in the mental hospital. Regardless of how you get in there, you usually have to go to the ER first and they'll make you strip and put on scrubs, which are so uncomfortable to sleep in, by the way. And they'll like drug test you and stuff and they'll ask you a lot of questions. In the first few days you're there, you have to talk to so many different people and keep telling them why you're there and it gets so annoying. If you're not already diagnosed with something, they'll usually diagnose you. Like before I went in, I wasn't diagnosed with anything and then I went in and got diagnosed with depression. I think it might be 15 and up, but I might be wrong, but like 15 and up, I'm pretty sure you are able to sign yourself out of the mental hospital without a parent. Correct me if I'm wrong on that one, but I'm pretty sure that's how it is. Honestly, the food there really isn't that bad, but it made me super constipated, not gonna lie. The majority of being there is just socializing with the other patients and going to group therapy. Anytime I make a mental hospital video, people are like, oh, well, how do you know? Or like, mm, there's only one way you could know that. Yes, I've been there. I'm not embarrassed about it, bitch. That's my whole, that's why I'm big on TikTok. Bitch, huh? Wait the f Part two of what you can and can't bring to the mental hospital, actual clothes edition. It's pretty similar to school dress code, not gonna lie. Spaghetti strings aren't allowed. 
Now, if you don't have scars on your arm, then this and this are usually allowed. However, if you do have scars, they most likely make you wear a long sleeve. It actually depends on the hospital. Sometimes they don't care and just tell you not to show people. Depending on the hospital, if there's writing on your shirt, you might have to wear it inside out. <laughs> Those strings not allowed. They will cut them off. And depending on the hospital, they will cut the hoodie off too. This is the same with sweatpants and anything with a drawstring cut off. Non-ripped jeans are allowed, but they can't be too tight. Belts aren't allowed, you already know. They use zip ties instead. All bottoms have to at least be kind of close to your knee. Unless you have scars, then they have to be covered up. All right, here are these clothes and you can get changed. All right. Can I have like some privacy? I'm permitted to watch you just to make sure that you don't harm yourself. How the fuck am I going to harm myself? Everything is round in this room. I just got admitted. If you're going to get hostile with me, I'm going to have to call the guards. Call the guards. What the fuck is this? Am I going to have to bend over and cough next? Jaden, we're sending you to a mental hospital because you're crazy. What? No, please don't. No. It's already been arranged. You're going to be locked up somewhere for weeks where you cannot escape or leave. Oh? And you're going to be stuck with crazy people like you. Uh, and the worst part? You're not going to be able to do your schoolwork. Say less. I know you're going to miss the family. Mm-hmm. You're going to be under constant supervision by the staff and everyone else there. I'm what? Your days are going to consist of eating, therapy, and watching movies or coloring books. How long am I going there again? Three weeks is what the doctor said. Three weeks? Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't make it longer? So I went to hospital because I wanted to KMS. And the doctor was like, just get a goldfish. They're really relaxing. I did not wait five hours to be referred to pets at home. And I didn't even have any goldfish. Fuck is you looking at? <sighs> nurse! Oh yeah, get the fucking nurse, because you were staring at me like Luke stares at Jesse's boobs. <sighs> what seems to be the problem, girls? She- Shut the fuck up. This bitch was staring at me. Like cartoon eyes popping out of your fucking head staring at me. Brooke, if you you're gonna really tell me that I'm in the wrong right now? I just thought you were pretty. Girl, we are both sitting in here in shrubs and grippy socks. You really think that I'm cute? You're not even cute. What the fuck? <gasps> That's enough! Don't fucking scream at me. Don't swear at the guard. It's not a guard. It's a nurse that sticks needles up your ass at 3 a.m. to take your vitals. Both of you are going in the padded room. It better be two different padded rooms or I'm gonna kill this bitch. Joke's on you, I'm gonna kill myself before you kill me. Hi, I'm in a mental hospital. And this is things you probably didn't know about mental hospitals. Before I start, I have to say that I live in Australia and other countries will have different standards in different places. So my experience will not apply to everyone. But anyway, what? Nurses do hourly visual checks on you here. So that means even if you're in the shower or in the bathroom, they still have to do visual checks on you. In Australia, we have private and public mental health facilities. Public facilities are for emergencies and severe crises. They're also open to the public, so which means anyone can go and is also free. Private facilities where I am. Private facilities are for low risk but unstable patients at the same time. These cost more and you need insurance to have them. They also are nicer facilities and also they have a better nurse to patient ratio. Three. The nurses are the ones that you go to for just about everything. They're the ones that help you with panic attacks, anxiety, depressive episodes and almost everything. Good morning, Mark. It's time for vitals. Let's go and line up for medication. Five more minutes. Do you want to be put on green? I'm up, I'm up, I'm up, I'm up, I'm up. What? You fuckers. You fuckers. You motherfucker! I will rain hellfire upon you! Girl, are you probably in a fake blunt? Yes. Girl, you're doing it like how we did it back in Baltimore! Hey! Hey! Throw it away! 
Where are you guys from? Tennessee. Oh, really? Me too. Where are you guys from? Here. Oh, really? Me too. Where are you guys from? <laughs> oh, really? Me too. Where are you guys from? In the back, on the left, over here, my left. I'm sorry? No, I'm just sorry. So how are you feeling today, sweetie? Feeling ready to go back home? Honestly, no. Um, I really don't want to go back home. It's just the environment. I'm, I'm not ready. I think I need to stay a little longer. Mm-hmm. I'm listening. Okay, so your discharge is actually going to be tomorrow. Congratulations. All right, hon, just give me an update on how you are. How are you feeling? I'm actually feeling pretty great. Yeah, um, I feel happy. Uh, I'm ready to go home as soon as possible. I'm, I'm good. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, so we're just gonna delay your discharge for about a month. Is that okay? The fuck? Let's talk about psych ward designs that just make sense. So most psych wards have metal hand sanitizers that are encased, and that's because we don't want people to be able to punch open the hand sanitizers and have access to the alcohol within them. And that's because some people go through alcohol withdrawal when they enter the psych ward, and there's unfortunately been people who either drink the hand sanitizer or they'll even put it in their rectum so that the alcohol can be absorbed into their GI tract and they can get intoxicated. Very sad, but we prevent that through these metal things. A lot of psych wards also give these socks with these little rubber grips on them and we have people change into these disposable scrubs and the rubber grips are so people don't slip and we don't want people to have shoelaces so they can't hang themselves. We avoid using these kind of doorknobs because we don't want people to be able to hold us out of the room or like I said, hang themselves with something. So instead we have these kind of doors that are designed at a slant and are harder to grip so you can't hold someone out of a room. Same thing with the bathroom. There's a slant at the doorway and then there's no bars right here.